Hey, what's up, guys? Um, uh, it's Quinn Royce here. Uh, I figured we'd just go through a um, a live session, and um, I just kind of walk you guys through um, my thought process and kind of, uh, you know, just kind of what I do whenever I go through a session. Um, I've actually recorded this session. I'm not recorded this session, but. I've actually recorded this video probably 10 times and I've done most of the editing and everything like that already so I'll just kind of walk you through what I did there and um, you know we'll move on past that alright so um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the first track and I'm gonna go ahead and go down here to our last ad-lib track hold shift and click that's gonna highlight all of those I'm going to wait for this little arrow to pop up right here and then I'm going to hold shift and option and I'm just going to pull all those down so that way we can see the stems and I can kind of walk through with you guys kind of how I did this. Okay, <clears throat> so first off, um, if you look at my mixer screen here, you can bounce back and forth between the mixer and the playlist window by holding command equals. If you're on a Mac, sorry, I don't know what it is if you're on a Windows, I've only ever used Mac computers. Uh, so if you look at the uh, if you look at the the mixer rack here, you can see that I have each one of these um, the output of each one bust out to an auxiliary aux, which is right here. So like for example, the 808 um, runs out of bus 808 and then goes to the input of the auxiliary bus. And then the output of that goes to the all music bus, which I actually have right here. Um, routing's relatively simple uh, in Pro Tools. If that's something you guys don't really understand or you would like to know more about, just let me know. Leave some comments below. And uh, we can definitely address that. I can make a whole um, video on just strictly routing in Pro Tools. All right. Um, but essentially, I've got all of my instruments bust out to their instrumentation bus and then um, all of those routed to a music bus so if I play this and I mute just the music bus you can still hear all the vocals but you won't be able to hear any of the music even though um, I didn't solo or mute any of the instruments themselves okay uh, also I've got all of my auxiliary buses so from here all the way to the submix every one of those is solo saved so that way if I do mute or solo one of the actual channels like one of the vocals or one of the instruments um, these auxiliaries will still play seeing how it is I have everything routed through them okay um, also if you have a number of channels highlighted like so and you want to go ahead and deselect those channels if you hold option and left click it'll deselect those or option and left click and it'll select all of them okay just a couple shortcuts um, so basically how I started this mix was I produced this beat and I sent it over to a client of mine who made the song for this beat and then I was going to mix the beat just to the um, just to the two track because I do that a lot and um, but I decided not to this time I pulled all the stems and there's not a ton of stems here um, it's a relatively simple song uh, it's kind of more just so for his vocals just to kind of shine through uh, it's a pretty cool little track I like it and um, hopefully you guys like it as well but basically how I start off every mix is I'll go through and listen to the mix I'll figure out what needs to come out of the mix. Um, T and R, by the way, those are going to those are going to zoom in and zoom out uh, as long as this little A Z button is highlighted up in the corner. Okay, um, so I just go through, I listen to the mix, and I find areas in the vocal that I don't like or that don't need to be there. For instance, if there's some breaths in the vocals, like. For example, we'll solo this right here. You can hear. I'm screaming. I'm screaming. He's going. I'm screaming right there. You don't really need that. Um, most artists don't like that in their performances. Uh, 
some vo some voices not voices some uh breaths are natural especially if it's like a real intimate like kind of singing song and um you know the artist has just got a whole lot of energy going on some of those breaths can be okay they can actually be like nice and pleasing to the ear uh he doesn't like any of his breaths at all in uh in any of his recordings so i go through and i chop them all out i also chop out any of the dead space and delete any of the um areas that we just don't need so like for example like all this right here it's just it's just room noise it's just resonance it's just rumble that you're going to hear once we start to compress and do some of those uh those couple of things. So if you just want to take a listen to that. Say what? It's like him just moving his mouth around, stuff like that. We don't really need that. Um, so essentially that's how I start a mix off. I'll just listen to the entire mix. I'll really just listen to the vocals. I'll mute all the music and I'll listen to all the vocals and just go through one by one. So I'll start with whatever's first, like the hooks first here. Um, I'll just hold shift, click, and drag to get m me a selection highlighted here. You have to make sure that if you right click on the play button that loop is on so that way it'll just continue to loop this section otherwise it'll just keep running. Um, also I'm pretty sure it's this little button with the arrow here. Um, if you deselect that and you click and play and then click like the space bar again it'll just keep starting you where you where your selection is so that way like for example you started working on something here and you go over here and um, you hear something and you pause and you know restart uh, it won't start you way back here you know what I'm saying you can just click and it'll just start you from that point on okay uh, so with that being said, I also did the same thing with the instrumental. I didn't go through and cut out every single little snare and all that because um, all of these sound, none of these sounds are live sounds. All of them are, you know, computer generated sounds, and um, so there's not a whole bunch of, you know, artificial information that's in between each hit of this snare or each like uh, roll of this hi hat or anything like that. So I just kind of cut out some of the big sections and um, did it that way. Uh, <clears throat> next would be to go ahead and um, get a rough balance. Um, I've already done that uh, on this on this mix. I've already got a pretty rough balance. Uh, I use this little view meter to kind of double check everything. Uh, I got it set to negative 18 decibels of headroom. Excuse me. Um, and that's kind of where I like to mix up. Uh, my process behind mixing, uh, especially when it comes to track outs and vocals all together, is I start with the, the low end, so the kick, the bass, the 808, whatever that is. I get that nice and tight. I get that sitting kind of where I want it. And then uh, I just move forward. I usually mix. Um, I know there's a lot of people that are like mix like the kick and the snare and then the vocal and then everything, bring everything else around them. I don't really do that. I just mix the kick and the 808 and I get that right. And then I mix the melody in with the 808 so that way I know the melody's sitting in a good spot. And then I adjust the faders for the snare and the hi-hat. And then I bring the percussion and whatever effects in after that. And then I actually pull the volume up on the vocals to match the snare level. And sometimes I'll solo just the kick, snare, and vocal at that point when I'm bringing the vocal in. Uh, sometimes I'll just bring the vocal in and, uh, you know, just like I would on a two track, I'll just bring the vocal up to volume and go ahead and, you know, start attacking problems that way. Uh, so, for example, we'll just go ahead and mute this kick drum and we'll go back and find us a section where we got some bass frequencies and we got some kicks and we got a little bit of the vocal we got a little bit of everything in there so we'll use this little section right here and I'm gonna go ahead and press play I'm not gonna talk while the music is playing so that way you don't have to worry about trying to hear me over the music um, this is the first video I'm posting so I'm still trying to get used to uh, kinda like all the volume levels and how, how things should go 
Uh, also, if you click on these plugins and you hold shift and click on these plugins, you'll notice now that that little red arm light is off. If that's off, you can click on any, any, any other plugin and this one will not go away. But for example, if that was on there, and let's say I click that delay, it would replace my view meter with that delay. Um, just so you know. Um, so I like to keep the view meter up, especially when I'm initially setting levels and, and things like that, things of that nature. So, uh, so like I said, I usually start with the kick drum and, excuse me, and then we just move forward from there. So here we go. Um, what I'm trying to look at here is usually my kick sits at about uh, three on this meter, and then I'll use the 808 to push it up to zero so that way I have a good balance between the kick and the 808. Um, I'm guessing last night when I started mixing this, I mixed it a little lower. Uh, I actually didn't have this view meter up last night. I was actually using this one. Um, it was farther down in the chain. So maybe that'll make a little bit of difference because we do got some uh, sub mix compression and EQ going on here. Um, I usually like to work backwards, uh, meaning I'll start with my buses and then work to the individual tracks as I'm mixing um, just to try to kind of get rid of the problem, problem frequencies, um, you know as a whole as the as opposed to like just spending one hour on like the hi-hat or whatever if i find that the hi-hat's just like not bright enough or whatever i can always just go to the drum bus and boost up a little bit of the high end and that kind of fixes up i could also come to the fader and just kind of push that up i don't really like to do a whole lot of processing on the actual channel on the actual track itself so uh like i said once again we'll listen to that and see if that made any difference. It probably didn't, but oh well, we'll just keep moving on. Okay, and uh, so essentially that's what I would do. I'd go through and then I'd pull the snare in. Anyways, um, and I would go through and just kind of do that just to get me a rough, a rough balance. Uh, later on in the mix, there's definitely going to be some tweaking up and down on some of these knobs and some of these faders. And uh, uh, there's actually quite a bit I still have to do to this mix. Uh, I'll let you just take a listen to the mix, um, kind of how I have it set right now. I know the vocals are louder than the beat. That's because I was mixing this to a two track and decided to pull the track outs in. So now I'm going to have to beef up the, the stems to, uh, you know, meet the level of the vocals but that's fine because it honestly like i would rather remix these in pro tools than in fl anyways because i mixed the original uh beat in fl and to me fl just kind of always sounds a little muddy and i i seem to get a little more clarity out of pro tools i don't know if that's just me who knows but I, i'll let you get just a rough listen to what we got right now Oh, I ain't getting in my feelings. Yeah. I'm just trying to forget the yeah. girl you stole away my heart. Say what? And you ran away with it. Yeah. I'm screaming for love. <laughs> yeah. I'm screaming for love. <laughs> I ain't getting in my feelings. Yeah. I'm just trying to forget the yeah. girl you stole away my heart. Say what? And you ran away with it. Yeah. I'm screaming for love. <laughs> Oh, I ain't, but I know I can't not help. 
is gonna be super dope once I'm done mixing it uh, I mean I kind of like the way the vocal set like I said the beats a little weak because I pulled the stems in you seen that I had to push the fader up there and uh, I actually had to use the yo uh, trusty l2 limiter to help get us to level there but um with that being said that's roughly um my process so uh, once I get a rough balance on everything, kind of just the way I like it and where it's at, that's when I'll go ahead and start working on the vocal. I know there's a lot of people that say don't work on the vocal and solo, and I mean, I agree with that. Um, I've got a little mono compatibility button on my uh, Apollo Twin here, so I mix in mono quite a bit. Um, but I do initially like to mix my my vocal and solo but so that way i can hear what i'm working with um so what we got here i'll just go through this little chain that we got we got this sound suppr this noise suppressor i got it up at about 20 um so that way any type of noise that i may have missed when i was editing or just like the very tail end of the words that might be real small or whatever um, I just got this just to kind of clean it up. I just throw that on top of everything, and I'll probably honestly go ahead and throw that on top of the all vocals too. Um, this is the all vocals track is what I use to do um, all of my. Um, I guess I guess you could say like additive EQ, like boosting the high end, bringing a little more warmth back. Um, it's also where I do a lot of my major processing. So I put my parallel compression track on the all vocal track as opposed to the individual vocal auxes. Um, I do my width on the all vocal track. So it's more like a, like a submix for the vocals, just like this all music track is like a submix for all of the music. So that's relatively where I do most of my process. And that's why there's not a whole lot done here. Mm, Cause I don't really know exactly what we're going to need at this point once we get to there you know what i'm saying um the deesser um i haven't even set this i usually set this at 43 26 43 27 somewhere around there and we'll just go ahead and listen to this bulk and i'll go ahead and set this i just usually like it just to kind of kiss around that 3k area i'm screaming fuck love i'm screaming fuck love I ain't getting in my feelings. I'm just trying to forget your girl. You stole away my heart and you ran. I'm screaming for love. I'm screaming for. I'm screaming for love. I'm screaming for love. I ain't getting in my feelings. I'm just trying to forget your girl. You stole away my heart and you ran away with it. Yeah, I'm screaming fuck love. I'm screaming fuck love. But you can you can hear he's got he's got a pretty decent vo like vocal recording. I mean, there's not really a whole lot that I gotta do EQ was um on this EQ. Uh, I really just, um, 
I rolled off somewhere around 70. Well, I rolled off about 90. Uh, I rolled off some of the highs around 18K. Uh, I didn't do anything with the high end. Um, right around 3K, 2, 2.5, somewhere around there. I, I dipped out about 3 with like a medium band uh, around the 500 area with a pretty tight cue. I took about 3 decibels out. And then about 300, I took about 6 decibels out just to kill off any of that low-end rumble. It actually made his vocal pretty quiet, so I ended up having to gain stage it back up by about three decibels um, just to get it to match back up with the original recording. And uh, so this is what we have before and after. I'm screaming, fuck love. I'm screaming, fuck love. I ain't getting in my feelings, I'm just trying to forget your girl, you stole away my heart, and you ran away with it, yeah. And in context with the mix. I'm screaming, fuck love. I'm screaming, fuck love. I ain't getting in my feelings, I'm just trying to forget your girl, you stole away my heart, and you ran away with it. Yeah, so just, just a little vocal clean up not too much it's not too noticeable it's not a harsh eq or anything like that um i come in next with the uh, fairchild 670 uh i like using this one uh i didn't even know about this plugin i was watching an alex Tume video he uses this plugin pretty frequently and uh, i kind of like the amount of warmth that it adds to it his vocals are a little brittle um <clears throat> most of the time when he sends them to me so this kind of brings that body back in and gives me the level that i need so in and out yeah and see to me that just kind of catches all those like initial transients it's got a pretty fast uh, attack on this compressor here we're doing about uh negative three decibels of gain reduction uh we're boosting that back up by three decibels um i've got the time constant at three and the threshold at seven which is pretty pretty high threshold but his vocals are um if you actually look at them i mean they're not they're not super harsh clipping so it's really just taking those peaks off right there um and then I move on down to the 1176. I love this compressor. It's a nice compressor. I like using the blue version of it. Uh, usually what I do is I, I bump the uh, the input so that way I can get the compression the way I like it. And then I kind of dial back the output to kind of set it back in the mix. Uh, you can also do this with the R compressor from Waves. Um, I kind of use those interchangeably. Uh, I really like the 1176 though, so I kind of just use that one. Uh, and this one is kind of backwards, so um, I'm pretty sure that a fast release is on this side and a slow release is on this side. And same down here. So, I mean, fast release, slow release, fast attack, slow attack. So <clears throat> I'll bit of tell once I start looking at this compressor. But I'm pretty sure we got a relatively slow attack and a medium release on this. Um, so before and after. I'm screaming fuck love I'm screaming fuck love I ain't getting in my feelings I'm just trying to forget the girl You stole away my heart And you ran away with it yeah. I'm screaming fuck love yeah. I'm screaming fuck love yeah. I ain't get You see how with the, with the fast attack, it kind of pushes it back a little bit. It ducks us transients a little too harsh for me. And uh, it kind of seems like the vocal is a little more distant to me. Uh, I kind of want the transients to pop through, seeing how it is we just squashed most of the transients with this Fairchild. So we're going to leave that slow release on. And I just feel like it helps the vocal kind of just move around a little bit with the beat. So one more time, I'll, I'll just pop it in and out. Fuck love. I 
ain't getting in my feelings. I'm just trying to forget your girl. You stole away my heart party. and you ran away with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And then uh, I go on down with the Arvox. Usually I would do some type of like additive EQ at this point. Uh, I don't really see, I don't really feel that he needs it right now. Um, at least I didn't last night when I mixed this, and I'm not going to change it. Um, so as we move on through this mix, I will, uh, you know, probably do some additive EQ. Excuse me. I feel like i got to sneeze. Um, I'll probably do some additive EQ to all the vocals all together. Um, I mean, we still got to get in here and... EQ out some of these background vocals. We still got to do some EQ to some of these drums. We still got to add some uh, distortion to the kick, the 808, maybe the clap. We got to add some reverb. I got to make a fucking reverb, like a drum plate um, for the reverb. Because uh, all these rever these two reverbs right here are definitely just for the vocals. Uh, I need to make a like a like an all mix reverb, something I can throw on the sub mix to kind of just glue everything together. Uh, so we, we still got quite a lot to do um, on top of I still need to get this vocal writer set so that way um, I don't have to go in and do any clip gain automation because that takes forever and I personally don't like doing it the vocal writer does the trick for me and I like using that uh, also uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and hop into what we did on this uh, this Arvox here, you're gonna really hear like a lot of level with this Arvox because um, it really brings everything forward. And at the time, I didn't have my parallel compression bus set up, and so even with parallel compression, I still like to use the Arvox. I feel like it gives it that little bite just to kind of pop through the mix a little bit more. So before and after. I'm screaming fuck love. I'm screaming fuck love. I just feel like it really helps the vocals kind of like set up with the clap, like where the clap needs to be. And uh, uh, I just think it really, really brings the vocals forward. I don't like to do a whole lot of heavy compression, especially with someone who's got kind of like a light vocal like Chucky does. Uh, not saying he doesn't have a strong vocal, but the, just this song I felt like didn't really need to be like super overly compressed. Uh, I added a 16th note delay. You probably won't even really hear it. My delay settings are, I got the H delay. We're on 118 BPM. I've got it set on 36 for the feedback. I got the analog off. I got it ping ponged and lo-fied. So it's really just kind of going to dance around your head. You're not going to really even notice it's there. Uh, but it's there. So we'll turn that on and then we'll listen to that. I'm screaming fuck love. I'm screaming fuck love. I ain't getting in my feelings. I'm just trying to forget the girl you stole away my heart and you ran away with it. Yeah, I'm screaming fuck. What we could also do is we could go over here and we can go to sound field. And maybe get this S1 imager and just kind of push that delay kind of out a little bit. And, uh, you know, just so it's a little wider. I'm screaming, fuck love. Straight up. I'm screaming, fuck love. <laughs> I ain't getting in my feelings. I'm just trying to forget the girl you stole away my heart. And you ran away with it, yeah. So... <laughs> Um, <clears throat> all right, yeah, so, I mean, that sounds pretty good to me. I've got an eighth delay. It's set up at about 30. Uh, I'll probably push it in and out with some automation later on in the mix. Uh, my settings for that are, uh, we got the eighth delay. We got the phase cancellation on the left with the lo-fi. We got the analog off and set to its stock 36. Um, we've also got a high and a low pass filter at about 300 hertz and about 3k. Um, I, it kind of felt right for me right there. And then um, it's going to be the same for the 8th delay. I noticed I was just clicking on the 16th delay. Um, we'll actually bring that imager over. We're going to bring it down just a smidge. And then um, 
We'll hear that in and out. I'm screaming fuck love. I'm screaming fuck love. I ain't getting in my feelings. I'm just trying to forget the girl you stole away my heart. And you ran away with it, yeah. I'm screaming fuck love. I'm screaming fuck love. I ain't getting in my feelings. I'm just trying to forget your girl you stole away my heart. later we're working the vocal right now anyways and then uh i've just got a long verb so i'm going to turn this long verb all the way up uh, i usually don't use the d verb but i decided to use it for this song we've got the gain pushed all the way up um we've got a haul it's a medium haul um you can do some calculations um if you do sixty thousand divided by your bpm um that gives you 319 so that's the quarter note of the song and then I divided that by two, and usually I would have this set, but I didn't really set it yet. So we're looking at one point. What was that? We're looking at 160 um, for the decay there, and the pre-delay. We I try to get that under 100. Shout out to Help Me Devon because. Uh, He's the one that really showed me that. I'm going to leave this one at 17, but on this short verb, we're going to run that up to about 79. I think that's what that was uh, for the uh, 70, actually 80 would be the pre-delay, and then 1.6 would be there for the short delay. Uh, we're going we're gonna to turn this down to about 12, and uh, I'm actually going to leave that at what I had it. I had it at like 2.6, something like that. I kind of like the way that sounded. I'm, I'm not using the high pass or low pass filters on this one. Uh, of course, this one's a haul. This one's set to plate. It's a large plate. This is a medium haul. Um, and the way we got this set up is this is actually, um, I'm probably going to cut somewhere between four and five on the haul. And I'll leave between 3 and 3K on the short verb. And we'll just listen to that. And I'll just readjust them here in just a second once we actually listen to it. I'm screaming fuck love. I'm screaming fuck love. I ain't getting in my feelings. I'm just trying to forget the girl you stole away my heart. And you ran away with it, yeah. I'm screaming fuck love. I'm screaming fuck love. I ain't getting in my feelings. I'm just trying to forget your girl. You stole the away the my baby. heart and you ran away with it. Yeah. She the type of little bad, little baddie that puts the panties to the side. To the side. She'll look you all dead in the eye. You get a pull it out. <laughs> Got me feeling like damn girl. Damn girl. Why you do me like that? Like that. Make a nigga go bust all in your inside. Up in your inside. And I ain't get to hit it from the back. Yeah. I love the way she wrote me in the back. She in the back. I love her when she said that they nasty. nasty. Let me go and just put one. Uh, yeah, so obviously, 
the reverb in some spots need to be turned down a little bit and uh you know we're gonna do a couple cool little delay throws on you know some of these spaces where um it's a little sparse uh it could use a little more excitement we're gonna also do a couple tape stops and you know kind of beat drops do some emphasis maybe some low pass um filtering and uh some things like that but uh that's pretty much it man that's that's how i start my mix and that is how um you know i get my level set and how i start to work on the vocal uh if you would like to see me finish this mix then uh of course you can comment in the section below if you didn't like this video at all, you want to see something else, like maybe um, a production tutorial or just some vocal mixing or maybe just some cool vocal mixing techniques. Uh, if you guys would like to send me songs to mix live for you guys, I could do that as well. Um, I mean, I'm just here to spread whatever knowledge I have because due to the vast amount of knowledge we have on the internet nowadays it's really hard to differentiate between like what a whole bunch of garbage is and what's something that you can actually use and learn and obtain and add to your daily routine uh so with that being said peace out and we'll see you on the next one